Hi, it's Nikki from Wildlings Forest School here. Today I'm going to be teaching you and your parents to use a whittling knife safely. So whittling is when we use a pocket knife or knife to carve and shape wood. The things that you'll need today are a pair of garden snips or secateurs, yeah, that's to cut the wood. You'll need a weed species of some sort, so in your, from your backyard or a local park, some Brazilian cherries, some Chinese seltzers, whatever is a weed in your area. I've been a bit lazy here and I've picked up a piece of mango wood from the ground uh, because I know that it's soft wood. Um, but I would highly recommend using green wood because it's far easier to carve and less brittle and less likely to break than green wood. So, the knives that we'll be using today is called an Opinel round tip. Now we do sell these in our online shop and the reason we sell these is because they do have a round tip rather than a point. So there's far less likelihood of injury, a stick injury, when it's got a round tip. So, to use these safely, we these are currently in the lock position. So right now, the little hands can't open it. To unlock it, you, you'll need quite a bit of good finger dexterity and strength. So that's another reason we like them because little siblings can't open them up. So we're going to turn the collar towards ourselves if we're right-handed to open up the gap here. Then you're going to see there's a little thumb shape here. We're going to pop our thumbnail in that and we're going to open that away from ourselves. Now the most common injury that you'll see uh, is from children who've never opened a knife and never seen how to open one or been taught to open one grabbing the blade here to straighten it. So you need to keep your thumb here to pull it open. You then need to lock the blade so that you don't uh, close the knife accidentally on yourself. As far as sitting position goes you must make sure that you or your child has a safe blood bubble so that there's no one close to them that they can reach and stab or hurt with their knife. Okay. You'll notice here that I'm leaning forward and I've got my elbows on my knees. The reason I do that is to protect my uh, triangle of doom. So in here, in your thighs, you have uh, your femoral arteries. If you were to slice those right open, you would bleed out in about three minutes. We don't tell children this to scare them. We tell it to them so that when we ask them to sit like this, they understand why. It's not just one of those arbitrary rules. It's a rule to protect themselves. So we pop our elbows on our knees, we lean forward and we point the wood down and the blade away from us. So we start with the blade flat and then we angle it about 45 degrees. It's not a saw, it's make it terrible saw, that's what saws are for. Whittling knives are for carving and for right now we're going to skin it or skin the bark off. We're always cutting away from ourselves, okay? If we were to cut towards ourselves we would obviously chop our fingers and if we leant it against our bodies, yeah. Please don't do that because you can do yourself a serious injury. So we're pointing and angling the wood down here and we're aiming at our feet. All right. You can see here this wood's quite uh, old and, and brittle so I can cut through this very easily. So I could make myself a spear quite easily with this. I won't spend too much longer on that. All right. Uh, things that we make are bow and arrows and spears, crossbows, slingshots, but you know, most children just enjoy the process. So it's generally process over product. Um, children love, and actually it's good for everyone, those mindful, repetitive um, movements. So Tai Chi, uh, knitting, crochet, those things are great for calming our minds. When we're done with our, or actually even when we're not done, even if we're pausing in our work, we always have to make sure we close it. So the way that we close our blade is to again grab the edge of the not sharp blade here so we never run our fingers along the blade you can see I've got the moon shape here as a guide again so putting my thumb into it and I'm closing it and I'm making sure that my fingers aren't over top of it because that would obviously snap shut on them and cut them so we're holding it on the outside of it doing that really slowly and then we're going to lock that again so that our siblings can't get into it we keep these up with our matches and other things or in a lock box in our trailer so that little hands can't get them. So that's how to whittle and whittle safely. I'll refresh that really quickly. So we've got our blood bubble. We are protecting our triangle of doom by leaning on our elbows and angling our wood and our knife forwards towards the ground, not towards ourselves. We are opening and closing them slowly and watching our fingers and moving the blade away from ourselves. Um, what else? That's about it. So, oh, we're closing.
disposing them really carefully and we're keeping them in a locked storage box preferably. Now my children have been doing this since they were three and five and uh, it's probably not normal but that, that was because I was able to spend some time with them in those early days sitting with them and making sure they could do the right thing. They're old enough now that I can send them out with the snips and their pocket knives and they can go and collect some wood, bring it back, set up their safe blood bubble and they can work on their projects independently without me. That does take time, it won't happen the first time, it might not happen the third time or the fifth time, but once it does happen it's fantastic independent play for them. So if you've got any questions pop them in the comments below and we'll talk to you soon. Stay wild!